Hey guys, such a warmonger here, and you're watching 3 vs 3 Kingdom of Heaven. Uh, this is an attackers vs defender scenario, and spawning in the northeast, which these days is kind of rare actually. We've got Prince Tagma uh, playing as the blue player as the Persians, and you've got Hyder as the Cyan player playing as the Berbers, and we got Cornmare as the green player playing as Turks. Uh, over on the defender side, you've got myself in gray, such a warmonger. Uh, I'm playing as the Britons, or the Anglish in this map. Uh, in uh, in orange, you've got any Bichi Vodke. And he's playing as the Franks. And in player 6 red, we've got Obelix, also playing as the Franks. Which is uh, unique for him, he usually likes to play as the English these days, so I'm glad he's branching out. Anyway, I wanted to start in the Capture Age because I wanted to show you the map. The whole point of the uh, map is to bring down the enemy morale. So if you're the attackers, you want to bring down the defender morale down to 0%. Because both sides start with 100%. The attackers need to bring down defender morale. Uh, interestingly enough, Cornmayer is moving his base uh, kind of just across the way in the um, Mount of Olives, just uh, southeast of the Mount of Olives to besiege this area probably. Now I've explained this in quite a few videos, when you isolate yourself you run the risk of cutting yourself off from uh, allied support. So let's see if that comes into play. But uh, Prince Tagma and Hyder do the safer um, maneuver, which is to deploy their camps uh, close to each other. Which is what I... Uh, not. It doesn't have to be this close, but I always advise that you're within um, like mutual supporting distance. So let's say you one player deploys here. I would say the farthest uh, another player would want to deploy if he's going to deploy east is maybe like here. Or somewhere here, right? Because he can at least get support from the guy who's over here. And over on the west, if someone's over here, then maybe he just wants to be kind of just here at the farthest. So then all you have like this triangle of support to where if one player is in trouble, uh, they can um, support each other. So yeah, the, uh, the attackers need to bring defender morale, defender morale down. Uh, both sides start with 100% morale, and the way the attackers need to do it is by capturing points. They've only got 45 minutes, and that's 45 real-life minutes. Not in-game minutes, but real-life minutes to uh, bring it down. Or else the attackers lose and, lose and the defenders win. So uh, that's what this uh, looks like. Uh, the most important points to capture that does the most morale damage. I'm not going to do too much uh like detail basically you want to capture this as the attackers is the dome of the rock or this the alaxa mosque or this the church of the holy sepulcher or this the tower of david those are the four uh most important points that you want to be uh sporting so you've got uh obelix running around with a uh uh, what is that? Let's actually go in, uh, in game and see what that actually is. So that's just a, a regular Templar Knight. That's not exactly the type of unit you want to be sending to uh, Scout because he's, he's kind of slow. And um, I sent some spearmen up here to kind of see what's going on. And I was surprised to see that uh, Hornmayer was up here. So if I do a um, Fog of War, I've, I discover that uh, there are structures here. So then, you know, as the creator of the map and the, the one who gives everybody as much advice as possible, I decide, you know what? Hornmayer established himself here. And we've got, uh, all, you know, one of my scouts, 
finding out that the other two players are all the way over here. So, uh, of course, I think, okay, well, time to take my own advice. Time to divide and conquer. You know, this guy, Corn Mayor, is isolated. So we should try to kill him now before he establishes a base, because once he's established, it might be harder. An uh, even worse th for Corn Mayor is, uh, I believe this is the first time... I lost my scout there. But I do believe that uh, this is the first time he's uh, played as the New Turks. Now, the New Turks are uh, completely cavalry based. So, from their barracks, you can only train two types of units from the barracks. Light cavalry and Turkoman. Turkoman is just ever so slightly stronger than a swordsman. Um, it only barely defeats a swordsman, and that's because it has zero armor. So, fortunately, you know, it's still it's still 30, uh, 30 food cost. It looks like um, Oblix has found uh, one of Hyder's uh, side bases he's doing. This is sort of the uh, proper way to kind of um, expand. The less risky way, not proper way, the less risky way. Anyway, look look at the mood. It's 8 p.m. Once it hit night, hits 9 night p.m. No, night. <laughs> night p.m. 9 p.m. Uh, suddenly your vision goes um, to only yourself. You cannot see your allies and uh, line of sight is much lower. So you see this guy has only two line of sight. It's dreadful, it's dreadful and claustrophobic. But, yeah. So I was saying, like, this is the um, a safer way to expand, is to like, establish your base and then establish a farther away base. You can do what Cornmare is doing, but that delays your main base and the number of men you have. So anyway, here I go. Starting to push out. So if you look at it from the Cornmare point of view, What's he going to do against all these spearmen? I mean, he's pure cavalry, right? Not only pure cavalry, like, he's got a lot of weaker, weaker cavalry. And so, he's taking this engagement, and, like, this will not win. There's just too many spearmen here. And it's also, not only that, it's supported by, like, the strongest Crusader Knights, including, like, the, the Defender General. So the reason why I would bring my Defender General is the Defender General has a, uh, a very good line of sight at night times, 12 line of sight. And so he's like really useful at night time. He's just a reskinned uh, Elite Centurion, which will help. If I had um, Swordsmen with me, those those Swordsmen will uh, attack faster. But yeah, this is Corn Mayor. he's in trouble. Uh, Hyder has a few uh, Spearmen to support. Thankfully, I don't even know how he knew to have these guys here, actually. Like, Cornmayer is really lucky that Hyder had these spearmen. But, I don't think it's enough, guys. It's, uh, it's only so many spearmen. Only 27. And I know how good spearmen are against, uh, against knights. So I just pull my knights out and let the... Uh, let Obelix help with his um, sergeants, which actually he pulls away, which uh, is kind of annoying to me, but whatever. But, you know, I, I just let my own spearmen engage him at nighttime. And there it is. He's losing uh, more and more spearmen. Cornmare is absolutely helpless. He lost everything. Like, if we look at the uh, population... He's at 32. So this is like the perfect example. And here I even come with my um, heavy... <laughs> my heavy cavalry trying to uh, see what it, if I can come in. Ah, I kill a bunch of villagers. Pour some off his wood. So here's what Cornmayer is... Uh, kind of just like being killed at night. I mean, these Palisade Gates are uh, 
fairly strong against the uh, levy units, and that's what I've got attacking them. But I'm knocking at the, you know, I'm right here. I'm trying to get in, guys. The only thing providing good vision for Kornmeyer is uh, his own general, Baruksha. I mean, if he didn't have him here, like he he wouldn't see anything. Uh, Prince Tagma is sending uh, heavy cavalry and um, mixed uh, foot units to support. Oblix really did not want to uh, leave his men out there. I don't know why, to be honest, because like nothing's in danger, guys. Oblix, he should have just supported my attack, but whatever. Maybe he thought I uh, I had the situation under control. Oblix uh, runs back because he's he's I guess he must just be paranoid. This is what he sees. Got fairly good vision. I don't know why he he wanted to pull back, but he just does. He's just scared, I guess. Um, but yeah, Prince Tagma is coming in to help. But uh, I I don't know if he just doesn't know where Cornmare's base is. So maybe he thought Cornmare was killed already. But I'm still trying to push him. This gate is uh, taking a lot of damage. Prince Tagma is starting to work on the. Um, Postern of the Magdalene. It's a good move to open up another front. This is actually the main front, right? Because they spawn northeast. And uh, Hyder is continuing to build his uh, side base. But the uh, Cormare's gate finally goes down. Hyder sends uh, his own... I should add uh, swordsman, which is uh, much needed. So like um, these guys can do decent against uh, spearmen, but there's just not enough of them. You know, they need support. So like Ajnad need the support of other spearmen, and they need the support of like um, horse skirmishers because they're uh, meant to be uh, used in tandem with other units, because they're throwaway units. They're only 20 food as opposed to the regular levy 30 food. Yeah, I'm knocking on these gates. Once this gate's down, I can basically go inside. Now, if Cormair wanted to continue um, protecting himself, he, I guess he could have like built another little palisade wall over here, you know? That's really like classic Age of Empires style stuff. He's killing his own tent, by the way, because he has units behind it. And the way projectiles work is whatever's in the way, okay, whatever is in the way will get hit. So that building was big enough to be hit by his own men. I mean, these Kasaki guys are very strong, but it's just not enough. They do kill a lot of levy units, by the way. Those, those, those Kasaki uh, heavy cavalry were no joke. But without the support of uh, melee cavalry, these all of these horse archers are just going to die. Eider sends another group of uh, spearmen to help, though. Uh, I'm not... He's <laughs> he doesn't know that I'm already inside, so... And Cormair is not really talking to his teammates. That is another thing I actually have to talk to you players about. Is uh, talk to your teammates, guys. Because imagine if Cornmare said, go inside my base, they're in. Then, like, he has a bunch of spearmen. They would have killed, but this is what he sees. He's like, oh, I don't know what you're talking about. And then now he can see, look, they one-shotted, like, this really expensive cavalry. And now I'm forced to run away. But not before I take down the supply depot, because I didn't want... Uh, Cornmare to be able to make too many villagers. But here it is. Dawn is coming. So, uh, one minute in real life is one hour in the game. And Dawn comes at 5 a.m. So you can see the mood starting to change. And then, Hyder used to be able to only see his men, and now he can see his allies. And now, he can take stock of what's really there. I just want to finish Cornmare off. I want him- I want to force him to build near his allies. I don't want him to have this front open, so I, I, I take his elite tent down, which uh, will lower their morale even further. 
Because when you lose a command tent, you lose morale as an attacker. If you lose an elite tent, you lose morale as an attacker. So, mission accomplished. I leave my uh, archers there to die, but I don't want my general to die. Because I do lose, at, for the, at least for the defenders, and at least for this version, which is 9.9, .9, the general is irreplaceable. I might change that in the future. Maybe I can make him, like, heal him in one of these uh, buildings. But for right now, at least, the defender general is irreplaceable. I knew that his cavalry will come in. And I thought, you know what? What better way to lure in Prince Tagma's cavalry and just kill them? Or basically free. You know? Only thing is, like... Even these guys are just going to get shot down by arrows. I, I know my own uh, heavy cavalry can block a lot of like ranged attacks very easily. So I just let these towers just kill these. These towers really shoot slowly. But they are armor, spears, and crossbow bolts. So that's that's a situation there. And, and they because of their minimum range, because all ranged units have minimum range except for specific ones owned by the Berbers. Like, they just, like, get killed so fast. So, like, these two will just kill a whole bunch of, uh, Ajnad very easily. But, uh, Prince Tagma is starting his assault. He's trying to take the Apostle of the Magdalene down, but I am repairing it with, uh, villagers. You know, because, um... Oh my god, did they kill my villagers? So, these villagers are protected because they're so close to the posture of the Magdalene. Um, they're protected by, uh, you know, from arrow fire. So here's the te technique that I use, which is to send melee infantry inside the uh, postern, and then rally outside to protect the postern itself. And that's, that's what people should be doing. If you wanted to protect the northern front, you gotta be doing that. If you see a battering ram or siege towers, pop men over and protect it with ranged units. What well, Oblix should be doing, and he just never does this, and I don't know why, but he should set his archers like on stand ground staggered formation. Just leave them there. But Oblix is repairing the Damascus Gate, which is good. You got a battering ram coming in though, so let's see. Nothing's really going. I mean, like, there's this group of uh, hiders, infantry, but without siege equipment, I am not scared of this at all. Like, what are they going to do? There's nothing they can do. No, 65 men and stuff. Doesn't matter. I asked them to protect this uh, battering ram. Unfortunately, like, they're not killing it fast enough. So it's doing a ton of damage to the Damascus Gate. Now, like, Obelix pulls back. Like, I don't know what that move was about, but now, because now it allows this ramp to come in and de destroy it even further. Like, what was that move about? Obelix, I'm talking to you. You had like a nice thing going with your men right here blocking the way. They were elite. Uh, they were sergeants and like elite foot knights. They would have killed everything here handily. So that little move backwards was the wrong move. You know, I was uh, probably going to try to send villagers to repair that gate to, to keep it secure, but now it's gone. So yeah, anyway, yeah, for all players, like, yeah, the way to defend the gate from battering rams is just to sally forth even just a little bit, make sure that it doesn't get to kill it. Because, like, sergeants and knights with spearmen behind them will, like, easily kill a gate, a battering ram. And then like, the attackers have to get creative to try to figure out what to do against that. So anyway, let's uh, turn off cat, uh... Let's go back to Capture Age, guys. Cormayer. He's sending some villas to, like, build some uh, palisade walls to block this bridge off. I guess, uh, it's, I guess it's to build a siege camp. 
But now you've got uh, Prince Tamang back. And here, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna see if there's any 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 kind of space I want to come out. And I do come pop out with sergeants. It's important to pop out with not just like, not only like spearmen and like militia, but to pop out with sergeants and like elite knights because they, they're gonna be instantly surrounded. And so you want to be able to like uh, make a dent in the enemy forces. And uh, as far as Hyder, he this is also his first time playing as Berbert, so he's just he's just sending these like really cheap, really weak um, Ajnad, which die to anything. What you need to do as the Berbers is to have supporting horse skirmishers, archers, and everything, because the uh, Ajnad are only there uh, to either be fast and make like uh, to run around the city or make good flanks, or with uh, spear support. Tie the enemy down to allow your archers and skirmishers, mangonels, trebuchets to like kill this group because all of this will die to range units very easily. Like if if Hyder attack ground right here, because uh, if you haven't been watching my previous videos, I'll explain again. The way projectiles work is whatever they hit, they will hit. If they hit your own unit, they will damage your own unit. If they hit your own al your allies unit, they will damage your allies unit. If they hit a tree, then the unit behind the tree will not get affected because they hit the tree and not the unit. Same thing with the walls. And big big monuments um, protect you the best from projectiles. Let's go back in game because it's smoother. And it's actually close capture age. You got a big engagement here. Uh, any Vici Bokke uh, engaging with his uh, units. Sallying forth. He did a good job against like all the archers. But at one point he should have pulled back to save at least his knights. These are the units that you want to save and not lose. These ones, uh, yeah, also because they cost gold. A little bit more expendable, but they are also very powerful. So yeah, he thought, well, I'm gonna just kill all of this stuff. Ain't gonna work. Prince Tabba coming in, seeing what's up here, but these are light lancers. These are just as strong as light cavalry, man. These are... The way light lancers work is you... They have a... Um, they have a charged attack. So you, like a Custilier, you know, of the Burgundians, that's their specialty. But they're so weak, they have no armor. And they're really weak. So they're like 1.6 speed. So if you pair them with, um, with Turkoman and Light Cavalry, or like just like make an attack against archers, instantly kill a bunch of archers and then pull back. It's the pulling back that you need to do with Light Lancers. Like Mamluks, or these guys, they also have charge attacks, but they, they can sort of get stuck in a little more. It's more a reasonable uh, strategy to get stuck in, and like, continue the battle, if you do that. Prince by doing a good job, peppering my men with arrows, forcing me to pull back, because I don't want to just die from ranged fire. And here comes uh, Hyder with with Spearman. I think he, at this point, he kind of got pissed off at how... I'm just guessing, but he probably got pissed off at how weak Ajnad are. Spearmen are very, very good in, like, tight blockade situations. So on bridges or small, tiny streets, they do really well. So even, even against uh, elite knights. Uh, if, there, if there's enough of them. Fortunately, there's like a lot of these elite knights, so these spearmen are going to eventually get killed, especially with a spearman support. But Pinstagma using a siege tower, which is the right move, 100% the right move. And now he's gonna hop units over. Should pop this one too. Pop it over here, so he has uh, more coverage. And there it is. <laughs> Wow, that was weird. 
Yeah, Prince Dagma has captured the Bastion of the Magdalene. Which was definitely needed. But! What am I doing here? Oh, I had my men on, like, no attack stance, but I made them stop. And now, uh, Cormier was trying to be clever and sneaky by setting up a siege camp here. But, uh, nope. I denied that with my own heavy heavy cavalry. This heavy cavalry can beat this much Turkomen. Actually, there's like five of them, so it might have been a little more even. But yeah, there's nothing here for Cormayer. What is this? That's just a Lancer. So Cormayer forced back again. He rebuilt his uh, command tent, lead tent, and supply depot. But uh, at least this front is safe again, because you always got to check. Hyder and Prince Tagma now have like five trebuchets all in all. Working on the defenses. Actually, instead of working on defenses, they're just sieging units. If you want... Okay. I haven't done an attacker's guide yet. Oh, wow. This is a really good uh, uh, comeback from uh, Oblix. He's going to recapture this. So what... what... What Tagma could have done, actually, is he if he captured this and Hyder set the rally points over here, he could actually ferry any kind of melee infantry into the uh, postern and pop it back out. So you gotta be careful of posterns being captured. But yeah, I think the strat here, if you are gonna attack this front, is kill every tower which will make your own range units automatically just shoot at units instead of towers. So like you see they're like these guys are being dumb. And not only are they shooting at the tower, but because there's units surrounding the tower, they're killing their own units. Cuz uh projectiles are inaccurate. Well, we've got like range units here. Is that are those trebuchet shots? These are trebuchet shots, I think. Any Vigivoke with another flank. This is actually not a bad move if this area was in danger. There's not enough ranged units here to pose a real threat to like wiping out all of any Vigivoke's uh, units too much. But Hyder tried to open up another front. But I did the same trick, because Tankard's Tower you, is the same way. You can pop units in here, pop them out, the same way you would a postern. And so I popped units in and popped them back out, because I want to uh, curb this threat on the northwest. I also send a villager to repair Tankard's Tower, because it is under attack by uh, a single trebuchet. This is the right move from Hyder, though, is to try to open up another front. You can see the, uh, the Ajdad didn't do too terribly. Like, he lost a lot. Once again, it's about range support. The Berbers are not about these guys. These guys... You definitely need the range support. The sun is uh, starting to set. And it's 7pm. You can see the moon is changing. You can see how problematic it is to have no supporting units for your archers. Like, these three knights, killing so many guys. Like, I wish it was kind of like StarCraft, where you could see each unit's kill-to-death rage, like, kill num kill count. But they are starting to get surrounded, so they are gonna die. Yeah, finally. But they took a few, quite a few uh, stuff out on the way. I think this is the back ground, actually. Yeah, he's attack grounding this area. I'm not sure why. Any BG uh, Boke tried to uh, do a raid. And now these are the Ajnan horse skirmishers. Now look, look. Every hit on a, on, a, on a target hit by a horse skirmisher, this is like a ranged Obok. And that's how powerful the Berbers are. So this Hospitaller Knight is getting hit a little. He's losing more and more armor. 
which will allow his Ajnad to do even more and more damage until it reaches the point where it does as, as much, like just under, like just slightly less than a Spearman against, you know, an Elite Knight. So imagine all of these cheap, cheap Ajnad attacking armorless knights and doing as much damage as a Spearman. So it's like a really good combination. Ajnad and Skirmishers. And that's why you should use these in... You can use these in two ways. If you make the Kasaki Horse Skirmishers, they should actually be like right behind the front lines, closely supporting the enemy. I mean, like, your own troops. And taking out armor. Allowing your really weak Ajnad to actually do to be like glass cannons. Because right now, 5 attack against 3 armor is like, eh, you're only doing 2 damage. But imagine if these are getting hit by the ranged Obux, if that, you know, essentially. Then suddenly you're doing 5 damage each hit against these guys. They're still in, you know, Hiders continuing to uh, work on the tankage tower. Not good. Now this is good. He did raid my, um... Like, he is raiding my, uh, my stone, stone miners, and that's good. But it is already nighttime. And so, oh, you know, Tagma, these guys do amazing against, uh, elite knights. So they have plus six attack versus cavalry. So that's seven plus six, 13. And the armor of his knight is four. So they do nine damage a hit against elite cavalry so these guys are very scary and they have one range now they they're they're only slightly faster in terms of attack speed than a spearman but they can hold their own against uh like sergeants as well because of their range so uh, mamluks are very scary units sergeants on the other hand um they're really good too you know, you gotta have some sort of, like, weird balance to make a game fun. You got any Vichy Boke? Oh, here. I cleared up. I didn't like that uh, Hyder raided my stone, so I had some revenge. So, yeah, so I, I, I have to say, like, if you're gonna play this for the first time ever, don't pick Berbers and don't pick Turks if you're Ayavids. Pick Persians or Saracens. They are easier to understand. Easier to play with. And if you insist on playing... What's going on here? If you insist on playing Berbers or Turks, you know, watch this video. Or watch my previous videos. Do some research. Like, I have a guide in the description. Uh... Uh, I have a link to a, a full-on guide. If you're that interested in this map, I have a super full guide. Oh my god, what is any BG? <laughs> Ooh. He just sent his general to his death. Unfortunately. This is a good sneak attack from Prin Prince Tagma. This is a very good sneak attack from Prin Prince Tagma. I don't think uh, Obelix is aware of this. He's only mildly aware of this. He has no forces here. In fact, nobody has anything here except for... Uh, I guess we have uh, some elite knights. But this... He has so many spearmen. This is going to be a very good attack. Meanwhile, Hyder has the perfect, perfect uh, distraction. He is coming in. Running around. And it is nighttime, guys. So... You know, now we're like, oh god, we have to run around and recapture things. You know, oh. And now the Golden Gate is under attack, Oblix. Like, oh boy. I mean, this is, these are the kind of things you have to do. Especially at nighttime. I don't know if Oblix even noticed this. But the, the outer Golden Gate is going to go down very quickly. Because battering rams are the best units against gates. They take gates down so quickly. That's why you have to make sure you kill them. Outer gate, Golden Gate went down. Tankard's Tower went down. Hyder captured it. What is he doing? Oh, oh, he's fighting. 
Look how much trouble these... <laughs> a single sergeant is causing so much trouble because of the inaccuracy of units. Oblix is going to recapture it though, so good for him. He recaptured this and he recaptured this. But Prince Tagma took the Dome of the Rock. Now the defenders have a uh, slow... Oh my god, this is amazing. Oh, if he captures this, that would be so good. I'm not sure he knows about it though. So he captured the Dome of the Rock. That was a very good sneak attack at nighttime. That's exactly what you need to do as, a, as an attacker. Just to keep the defenders on their toes. But here I am, such a warmonger. I did come out with a massive, massive sally. To clear this base of hiders. Because I did not want him to have this. To annoy and pester me on the front. I'm trying to reduce the number of angles of attack the enemy can come in. And that's my whole thing, right? I don't want the... I want to predict where the enemy can come from. Obelix is defending this front. I guess he's... He must be aware. Yeah, he's coming in. So let's see what he does. This is what Obelix sees. He's got a huge group of... Oh, Tagma didn't leave this area protected. It would have caused so much damage. Because that's six towers... Doing 15 damage each. Armor piercing damage as well. Uh, and see, this is how you should do it. Obelix is sealing the gate. He has a mix of uh, sergeants and spearmen. Which will kill and defeat these Turkomans. Because they're basically the equivalent of uh, cheap and pathetic swordsmen. And with an arrow support, you know, that's going to do really well. Now you've got like elite... Units and um, medium infantry, elite infantry and medium infantry facing off against medium and light infantry. So this is a balance. It's it's this is actually like Prince Tagma is gonna do well on this left side of the uh, Dome of the Rock. This is a good battle right here. So you can see the power of the Mamluks with their uh, seven attack and range. Doing a pretty decent job against uh, Obelix's forces, but the flank from the north with my own knights is going to surround these guys and then kill them. But also, I continue my rampage. There were a bunch of like archers here outside of the Damascus Gate left defenseless because uh, the minimum range, you need to keep your archers supported. They were left defenseless, and I had all of my infantry... Just making a slow flank towards there because they were probably distracted. And now, Hyder tried to support the attack, and so did Cornmayer, but it was it's all in piecemeal. So now we're able if they come in piecemeal, then it's not really going to work as well. This is what Cornmayer can see. You know, dawn is coming, so it's about to be uh, daytime. They did capture these towers again, so that's good for them. And they are holding onto the Dome of the Rock. So that's good. But we did kill most of their forces. Which will force Cornmayer to just run, ring around Rosie. He killed more of the gates. That's another good move. If he kills this gate, then that just leaves a, another avenue of attack for the attackers. Uh, I think the problem is the, uh, the food. No, no, it's not a problem. They should look how much gold. Oh my god. This is wasted gold, guys. You gotta be making your gold units. Gold units are just stronger. Make your Mamluks. Make your... Kasakis. As Ayyubids. Just make your gold units. But here I am, like, such a warmonger, just... Continuing my rampage. I, my next target is this, to further isolate the angles of attack. Basically force the enemy to just come from here. Which is so far away from the objectives. And we do wipe out the attacking forces. And we want to take this back. Wisely Prince Tagma fights over here. See, that's a good tactic. Prince Tagma's doing well. He's got the right idea. But here I come with a cavalry flank to take out the this uh, pesky siege tower and uh, range support units. So this attack is uh, has been thwarted. Handily. And there it is. 
There's only a few units left, depending on this area, and we take it back. We take back the Golden Gate. And even though these Mamluks, Mamluks do really well against elite knights, mounted knights, not in, like, there were only, like, three of them. So there's five minutes left in the game. We can probably just, like, fast forward already, because, uh, I think you know this game is over. I mean, we were protecting here. This will just be retaken very easily. Obelix is already saying I can leave because we know we're going to win. And, uh... Even if we lose all of this, like... The defender morale is at 77%. It's just it's just over. Let's, there's just too much here. And I'm making, like, an attack here. Now, there are some Mamluks... Maluk Lancers here. But only like five. So like with this many sergeants. I think the sergeants plus a few of the uh, urban militia will win this fight. Yeah, I did kill the tents. We do have even more reinforcements coming from any Vichiboke. And yeah, I win this fight. Infantry against cavalry. It's hard to use the Turks. You have to know what to do. So what I always say is... You have to pick your battles. And you need infantry support. Cavalry are too easily countered by spearmen. The only way the Turks can deal with spearmen, if, if it's a pure Turks, is their horse archers. To try to, like pepper them and being annoying and then run away and then attack and run away which is too micro intensive so you really need to rely on your allies to make infantry and and pin the enemy down while you attack from the flanks or like you shower them with the horse archers you know the advantage of the turks is their maneuverability and speed so they can attack any flank so let's say you sneak if you follow my cursor this is my cursor Right here in the center of the screen. Just follow my cursor down to this minimap. And there's 98 ticks left. But if you followed... Oh, I'm even attacking over here. If the Turks, like, a lot attacked over here... On the south and Zion Gate, like, over here. With, uh, like, one villager with battering ram. And then, like, cavalry. Then they start causing problems. Because the defenders need to, like reroute defensive units you know these guys might need to leave the this area these guys might need to leave this area to try to deal with them because the the cavalry is just running around the city capturing all, everything you know that's turks and um the turkomans if you throw them you know piecemeal against a gate like this or like a gate like this with only two defensive towers uh they can actually take a gate down because they do have slight bonus damage against gates. It's going to take a while, but at least that'll... Uh, that effectively, you know, has the effect of forcing you to send at least a few spearmen away from your main line of defense. But yeah, that's the end of the game. Uh, Hyder trying Berbers for the first time. Cornmare trying Turks for the first time. Didn't work out. Any Vici, any Vici Voke, a brand new player, uh, quickly understood uh, how to make units and where to send them. So, uh, good effort on his part. He did well. Let's take a look at the stats. Ooh, okay. That's ridiculous. So, that's my kill death ratio. It's literally more than two to one. It's like, wow. Let's get a calculator and figure that out. There's like a uh, level 8 divided by 551. That's a 2.19 kill, kill death ratio. That's ridiculous. Even for first person shooter standards, that's pretty good. Um, wow. 35 tens killed. Ah, I'm patting myself on the, on the back. Hyder, largest army. That's because he's the Berbers. And um, that's another thing with the Berbers. If you return to the map. Their Ajnad, they actually take, they're actually reskin Karambit warriors. So they take half population. 
So the Berbers are very good, and so are the Turks. Turks have access to all of the different kinds of cavalry that the Ayyubids um, have access to. Except for skirmishers. Or skirmishers. Like, they've got very good... Um, very good horse archers. All sorts of different kinds of horse archers. All sorts of different kinds of light cavalry. Uh, the medium cavalry. There's only one kind of medium cavalry for the Ayyubids. And, like, the two... The two different kinds of... Um, Elite heavy cavalry. They're good. You just have to know when to attack. I, I had I have games where I have very good kill death ratios as the Turks. It's just all about picking your battles, knowing when to attack, knowing when to run away, knowing how to use your horse archers, etc. Each type of cavalry. You've got to be like a cavalry master and uh, and very good at micro. Very good at micro. You got to keep your cavalry alive. That's actually the number one thing. Because uh, cavalry is expensive in food. And so building up your army is difficult. Like an effective, strong army. And once you have that army, you don't want to lose it. Because then, you know, that's all that food loss. Uh, yeah. Hyder did... Ooh, hoo -hoo. He threw away too much. All of these killed, I think it was must have just been Hyder. <laughs> or something, I don't know. Tagma, about a 0. 0.5, close to 0. 0.5. KD, same with Cornmare. Hiders closer to like a 0.3. Oblix, it's like, uh, and the NEVG, okay, pretty good kill death ratios. All right, well, that was more of like a what not to do as Berbers and Turks, but I thought it was interesting enough to showcase just because of the, uh, the attack direction. I thought was interesting and uh, I thought it was interesting and like helpful to maybe talk about what not to do you know I talk about what what to do a lot of time times like I want to talk about what not to do to help too hope you had fun watching see you in the next video